Now, now you can start. Susan proofread this. Retarded. Okay. Byron just said, we want to honor this man, and she crossed it out with boy. Susan, maybe you can right. explain that later. Now you can okay. start. All right. All right, so first, we give a little background on Tom. We all know him well, but he actually grew up in Jersey City. Uh, it was a it was a pretty tough neighborhood, and he learned to love basketball at an early age. That's right. And few people know this, but he actually helped build the first uh, basketball court in the, in his neighborhood. And it was a tough neighborhood. He, when with the wet cement, he actually put his hand in and felt another hand out there. <laughs> it, was a, it was definitely a tough neighborhood. And that guy voted that year. Twice. <laughs> and he did. And he, and he played in. in uh, he played throughout high school. He did a really good job. Uh, it was tough. He missed a lot of games. That was a poor high school. There was a lot of rainouts that year, so he didn't. He didn't Tom was picked on incessantly though, throughout high school. You know, with his little tights, toys. Okay, I can have one for you here. Oh no, I got a very good okay. basketball. Right there you go. Little basketball for you. Nice, nice job. So yeah, so they they picked on him. He was too tall. You know, they had other names for him, Tuna Can Tom, I don't know where that came from. But, uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to his angry answer in a minute. Be patient. PG-13. Uh, but all these insults for, throughout his high school years prepared him well for his marriage. But, uh, I mean, actually, to, to, peak, to move to this neighborhood where we insult each other, um, Tom actually retained his basketball skills for the most part, even though he's old and fat. Uh, it's like, but it makes me look thin. It makes me look, feel good about myself. <laughs> he's been playing over the years, and he, he demonstrates he goes to the basket, and, he, and he's able to make uh, some dunks, even though David's ribbing him in the, in the gut. And he, and he plays with his head, too. Actually, he blocked David's elbow with his head last time he played. He did a great job. Um, he also studied hard. You, you guys brought that up. He, he was able to get, you know, his law degree. His parents are very proud of him. They were actually a little surprised. He used to stare at a, at a, uh, at a juice box. It's because it said concentrate in the morning. <laughs> but after he graduated and, and, and did all his studies, he, he became a lawyer, a proud lawyer today. Um, and afterwards, he met the love of his life. Beer. <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's really Susan. It's really, you know, Susan and Tom have been happy for over 20 years, and then they met. <laughs> they, really, they really have a great time together. Uh, and this is where I'm gonna need my glasses. It says that they're compatible because they're actually opposites. She's always screwing up, and he's always making things right now. Yeah, these glasses don't work. <laughs> I, I got this backwards. How embarrassing. No, but Susan is a sweetheart. I remember a decade ago, behind my bar at a party, she answered the phone and and very cordial to the woman on the other phone to talk to her and debating the merits of, of having a snow day. So a very sweet, sweet girl. And, and they have two fantastic kids together, you know, uh, Ryan and Gwenny. Very smart, very athletic, and look at how good looking those kids are. Thank God Susan cheats. I'm only kidding. That's not true. So when Ryan was playing basketball, I did see some Leonidas in them. Oh, and they to sweat. That's right, they didn't come down. I'm only kidding. Earplugs. <laughs> Here, you're going to need the rest because this is going to get bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> PG-13! Oh, no, but Tom, Tom's, a, Tom's a great guy. We all know this. But I wanted to bring him down just a little bit. And some of you who might not have been around the neighborhood, just, I want to bring him down just a little bit, maybe maybe just a, an inch, an, an angry inch, let's call it. Well, at least you'll be angry after this. No. <laughs> Tom can be lazy. Okay, <laughs> Susan, I, 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 let me, this is my speech, let me keep it. <laughs> you know, he, he, you know we, we have yard work around the neighborhood, and he never, never wants it. He, he says he's in the, you know, studying the Arctic, he has to go up in the Arctic. I have some emails to prove this, because I think you guys 
don't know Tom's being lazy, but he's, it's true. <laughs> and, I, and I did a treasure trove of emails I got over the years. On December 29th, 2013, he applied, I will be involved, no, I will be in Alaska tracking the migration of ink per penguins. <laughs> penguins don't exist in Alaska, you mean. <laughs> Further, on March 8th, 2000. 11, I have an email that says in a reply, uh, installing treks, uh, mm, now I remember, I have to go to Alaska to watch migrating whales. <laughs> I, 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 this is in writing, I kid you not. <laughs> not that he would be much help anyhow, those, those little toy, toy tools uh, that he has, little hikes. Uh, they actually melt in the sun, so he wouldn't be much help. Uh, let me see, he also said, on October 22nd, 2012, and I know this documented. I'm sorry I missed the festivities at Jim's house, but I was able to listen to the game at, while digging uh, out the tree. It's amazing how long that takes when you're digging with a plastic spoon. <laughs> some real tools like the brand new little tykes and all this stuff. Uh, and I think David has some So we tools. got you some tools. <laughs> those are nice, those are real tools. <laughs> they're little, but they're tools. Do they come with a first aid kit? <laughs> now, now, Tom, it isn't all bad with manual labor. When actually, when we go help out, and occasionally we get hurt, like I did uh, over David's house uh, for, after Sandy, Tom comes through with a legal document, we get reparations. <laughs> In an email to the neighborhood, he, he wrote, and this is the conclusion of a legal document, it is hereby agreed and understood that the defendant shall purchase and deliver to the plaintiff a cold, fresh, and delicious keg of Stella Arctic <laughs> delivered shall be delivered on or before Thanksgiving 2012, unless the delivery of the keg's plaintiff's wife shall say, What's he doing here? <laughs> 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 uh, and it is further agreed and understood that the plaintiff, Tom Gaynor, and <laughs> Mr. McCluskey shall have preemptive rights, whatever that means, <laughs> to the consumption of the subject cake, provided, however, the defendant shall also be permitted to drink the contents of said keg. Uh, I did write that. Well, he so, did. Yeah, I mean, I can prove it. Um, Tom also uses his, his um, you know, legal background in a negative way. In a one time, hey, Frankie, where are you? When, when Frankie got his new pool, he sent a notice around to all of us. And, and this was the title of the email, I kid you not. Notice of temporary end of friendship. <laughs> notice is hereby given that the filling of the Lassic Dignola pool commencing on 13th day of July 2006. The undersigned hereby gives five days prior written notice of commencement of the temporary period of friendship termination subject <laughs> contingency is included but not limited to Jerry's purchasing a cake penis <laughs> offering tap beer of any kind without floaties uh, commencement of any football season including tabletop folder paper football inability to use less nose pool for any reason including exclu exclusion due to my iris heritage and or inability to to pronounce certain Italian cold cuts properly. <laughs> <laughs> Established from a fire pit at Ryan's estate on a cool evening with cold beverages, receiving an invite to a third party's pool. Um, onset of cold weather precluding the use of the pool. For purpose of this notice, it shall be determined that temperatures under 80 degrees shall be too cold. Gatherings or events involving neighborhood residents, which the other side's wife and their children are invited despite unlikely nature of such an invite. Uh, any blade of grass cutting ceremony at the Munsell's residence. <laughs> Any event in which David Conta passes his grilling or any other reason determined solely at the discretion of the underside. And this is what we have to endure here. That covered everything. Aside from being a lazy jerk, <laughs> Tom can be insensitive. Come on, Tom, I love you. It's true. Um, let me see. When one of us got injured, unfortunately, now this is serious, uh, at, at the Munzio's house due to a defective chair, <laughs> I think Tom would feel bad about it. Instead, he rolled across the deck. It took about 15 minutes. Uh, you know, and very insensitive, I, you know. Also, when I got injured, where's, where's Brian? When Brian threw me to the ground in a hoops game, uh, instead of, you know, condemning Brian for his, his violent act, 
he wrote the following on February 3rd. <laughs> Super Brian Day and Whippany declared in honor of his selfless act. He shall toast this memorable event. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Um, he also Do makes you know fun what the leap of, of gastrointestinal <laughs> illnesses that some of us may suffer, like back when we jogged back in 2005, 2006. In December 6, 2006, he wrote, I just hope Jerry doesn't eat beefaroni again before running. It forces me to take the lead, self-preservation. But Tom and I did catch things up. We did actually patch things up. And later, he wrote about that, and he said, we did slow down to hold hands and look at the Christmas lights. He kept talking about the movie he loves called Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. Finally, he also carelessly brought up uh, past tragedies, like when David lost the couplings. Sorry. On May 8, 2010, he wrote, I think... I spot my wallet behind the couplings next to the little text tool set. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Great. Great job. Uh, yes, he can be, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a pain. He gets overly sensitive, too. God forbid you should say something about last uh, St. Patty's Day. I said, come over to the house. We'll have a drink. And don't forget to bring Nick Empty. That's what I call his wallet. We <laughs> <laughs> bought, so, bought you a new wallet. Oh my gosh, I can't buy mine. Oh, thank God, go to Brookside Diner now. <laughs> yeah, run out, Jerry. You think he'd laugh at that? No, not Tom. He got to the email. I deem any reference to Nick Empty to be an attack on my Irish heritage. It's not Empanito, Epidesh. Epidopolis or Eponito. Um, we also joked at one point because Tom didn't host any football games and then when we were all it was his turn. <laughs> he took offense. And then we joked that we don't even know where he lives. And he wrote, when, where I live is of no concern. <laughs> no one knew where the back cave was located and that man was constantly invited places. <laughs> Me, please shine the light illuminating into the sky here can open it. Even though it may be in Alaska continuing to study Steve quickly appear. Finally, one time we did accuse Tom of being loud at David's house. And he, of course, in December 1st, 2009, took offense at that and he sent an email around. The Don't accusations at David's pleasure palace, <laughs> the world renowned, which causes a person's voice to hold sound to those standing right next to him, even when the said person is whispering. As you can plainly see, I'm innocent of these charges maliciously asserted by one Jerry Borelli. <laughs> If he does not immediately withdraw the allegations, I will counterclaim against Jerry for excessive and reckless water displacement in a private hot tub under the law theory of Maximus Aqua Displacement. So in summation, he's a great guy, but maybe not as great as all of you thought. We love him. One's a certificate to uh, to get to Jerry's house for a Christmas Day beer. Oh, awesome. Did <laughs> Sharon sign that? Yeah. Um, she did. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He'll want it notarized from Sharon. That's a free free pass to re-enter my party after you get thrown out. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and then we wanted to get him something he could use, so we got him. Sex over 50. Sex over 50. He's in very good health. Right? He's solo. Children, you're the star. Did you throw it in? What? Did you throw it in?
don't go in. He's drunk already, people. <laughs> All right, there will be an email on Monday. <laughs> but you don't do that. Oh, it's beans. Oh, okay. well, thank you. Listen, the best part of this is probably all my favorite people in town are here. Um, there's probably one or two that probably aren't, but all the people throughout my life, particularly here in this community, uh, it's great to see everybody here, and it's, it's wonderful. And thank you very, very much. Um, that was bad. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. Eat and drink. Hey. <laughs> Lesson's all good, Brian. 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 Brian.